what's up youtubers on my way to a camshaft position sensor replacement it's also good for air filter box real quickly just want to show you some few things quickly unhook this unhook that undo this screw undo another screw right back here you got this mass airflow sensor right over here just unhook that pressing that down unhook this sensor right below here once again same thing pressing the top down and pulling out uh, then you're gonna have back here on my car with the evap system you have a screw to undo right over here and then you're gonna pull that out lastly I'll show you next where we go from here I want to show you what happens when you take a little bit longer to service the air filter you'll end up seeing something like this on the bottom over here so this is below the air filter you can see a lot of sand and leaves and whatnot so once again make sure to undo all your evap so you don't destroy the lines and this is what it's left that's enough to change the air filter and that you obviously do the reverse for putting it back together now over here some people do like to service this o-ring i want to show you here very quickly you have these torque screws that you need to undo you're going to have it across the rail right over here one two three four and then you're just going to pull it up the tool i used was this right over here as such so once i remove the engine cover you actually have access to three spark plugs right over here the other three spark plugs are a lot harder to get to. And I wanted to show you, you see what I have all this oil around this area. So basically what I'm gonna go ahead and do, eventually I'm looking to replace the sensor. I think a lot of the oil eventually dripped out onto the sensor. So if you take a look at your oil cap, I'm going to replace the oil cap. It's good to replace your oil cap in case it looks like this. So if you see all this, because you have an O-ring around your oil cap, make sure to check whether your oil cap is in good condition. I believe that's an inexpensive so dealer. This is the part number for the sensor that I'm replacing. Once again, this is bank two, left side, position sensor. And then for the oil cap gasket that I'm replacing on the oil filler cap, right over here are the part numbers. Being taken off this air duct right over here by removing the cover as such right over here. You have a few clips that you just push out. And then the next thing you wanna do is from the left end wedge the connector which is right over here which i already undid and as you can see right on this side is where you could press in and that's against the wall right there so the connector does have a lot of oil in there right over here it's wet you could tell right over here is also wet so this is the sensor once you pull it out right over here as you can see it's all oiled up and all you do once you remove this top screw right over here and undo the connector is just pull it out. Might have a little resistance because of the oil that's built up around the O-ring. This sensor, I'm trying to remedy my P1350, which comes back immediately after I clear it. So this sensor is once again for the P1350. And this one is to remedy the oil that's leaking onto this sensor, which I... So you wanna make sure that you undo these three screws in order to remove the air filter tray. Instead of removing the air box, I just removed the screws and then lifted it up so I can get this working area right over here. I didn't have the actual socket, I dropped it. So I ended up using this 10 millimeter right here and slowly working my way with the bolt. Just to let you know it is a 10 millimeter. So you could end up using this. Obviously if you have a socket and a tool, it's gonna be easier. But as you can see the bolts right over there, I just ended up working it in nice and tight. It is plastic, so don't over tighten it. When you're gonna be putting the sensor in, it's gonna be a little tight, that O-ring, give it a little lubrication and, and, and get it in there. It takes a little bit of a push, all right? So just wanna show you, now that I'm gonna be replacing the air filter, this is what a new filter looks like. You could obviously tell that there's a big difference between this and this. So. This definitely helps with fuel economy and keeping the car running longer. So very quickly, what I'm gonna be doing here is putting this stuff back together. Uh, just as I took it apart, it's gonna be the same thing. You're gonna put these screws in the air box, make sure to clean out your air box well, so that your new filter, as you can see, there's a lot of junk in there. Give the EVAP flapper a little bit of a, a wipe clean. You don't have to go crazy. Don't put water in there. Just scrape it off so it has the flap movement. A little learning experience right over here uh, for the air duct. As you can see, I snapped off the top parts. Now there is a lot of rust on these bolts. So unless you soak it probably overnight, some WD-40, uh, you, you may run into that. How I'm gonna hold it back down is with zip ties, unfortunately. So same thing, be careful, soak progression. This. Got those in, those three that I took out, one, two, three. Fasten that in, cleaned up, plug this stuff in, plug that in. Made sure not to forget all the sensors on the way 
back. So quick reassembly tips as I go along. So this is very quickly how I remedied it with some zip ties, linked together some zip ties as such, put them through these holes right over here, went underneath, across, all to maintain this. And you have a lot of stuff here. This will have a lot of dirt in it. You wanna give that a good clean and this will have a lot of dirt in it. Give it a good bang out. As we Just progress, make sure to pay attention to on these genuine filters. You'll see that it has a front and an up. When you're putting the box in, try to set both sides in. It may not be flush, but you kind of want to get it in there. And once you screw the stuff down, it will be a bit more aligned. After assembling everything back together, getting the sensors backed in, everything plugged in in the back, next thing you want to do is grab your trusted scanner. Right. First thing we're gonna do is take the key, put it into ignition position two, which is where you have all the lights activated, but the car is not started. Make sure your car is not on. Next thing you wanna do is come over once again to the bottom here. You'll be able to find it. You'll see this white plug. Your tool is just gonna slide in as such. Once again, I have the dash off. So once it's plugged in, the tool powers itself. We're gonna go ahead and enter the OBD scan. Once it finds the right channel, we'll be able to scan the codes. Now, like I said, I had a P1350. With replacing that sensor, I want to see if that fixes it. The code was coming back immediately, so it seems like that would be a faulty sensor. Let's take a look. These are manufacturer-specific codes. For this scanner, they don't have Lexus, so I'm going to choose Toyota, which is the next closest thing. Obviously, it's a manufacturer. All right. We have air intake sensor and a 1350. We're gonna clear that. All right, so now that we read both codes, I'm gonna go ahead and document that. We're gonna go ahead and erase the codes. All right, now the command has been set. Verify function, press any key. All right, so now what you wanna do, is unhook your scan tool. You're gonna cycle your ignition, so meaning you're gonna take it off, turn it out, take your key out for about five, 10 seconds so that the modules can reset. Go ahead and start it back up. Now go ahead and give it a quick start. And we're gonna give the computer a little bit to process that. As of right now, I don't have a check engine light. The check engine light was coming back immediately. So let's take a moment to see. So within 10 seconds, it was popping up before. Maybe have to give it a drive cycle. But what that does tell me is that that P1350, that sensor was faulty. Like I said, the oil filler cap was the other part. Had I serviced that item earlier, probably would have prevented the oil flooding onto that sensor and saved me some money. All right, share in the comment section if the P1350 was remedied with that sensor. You have the part number. Another tip is, like I said, that oil filler cap is huge. It's a preventative measure. If you can get it done before this code and you see this beforehand, like, share, subscribe. See you on the next one.